So what's the deal with that giant guy in Elise? Is that her stalker or something? What's a stalker? It's like when someone's super obsessed with everything you do and follows you around. I see. So you would be Jude's stalker, for example. What? Mila, how could you? Doesn't it seem like that man knows the truth about Elise's past? Zhao seemed very concerned about Elise's well-being, but I don't know why. Zhao, you say? I've heard that name before. He might be a warrior of some renown. He has a remarkable talent for controlling monsters. Interesting. Something on your mind? Huh? You haven't been yourself since we spoke to Zhao. Yeah. I heard you followed the bad guys into the hunting grounds. I was worried. Well, it was an eventful manhunt, but we made it back in one piece. I'm so sorry you all got dragged into this. What a horrible coincidence. Isla, you can drop the act. W what do you mean? I really was worried about you. Why would I lie about that? Jude, what are you saying? I'm saying it was no coincidence we met Isla. Remember what those locals told us when the bell rang for the finals? At tournament time, any outsiders are either combatants or spectators. <sighs> right. I recall what she said when she came to help us. You folks don't look like you're from around here. What brings you to town? No one here would need to ask that. Not at tournament time. You were ordered to make contact with us. By Exodus. Isla, that's not true, is it? They said you'd never find out. They promised. But I had no choice in the matter. They blackmailed you, didn't they? They know your secret. Your former... occupation. They asked. Wouldn't it be a shame if Jürgen found out? What happened to the girl breaks my heart. But I had no choice back then either. Please don't tell Jürgen. He doesn't know. How could I tell him? He's a good man. But it's all in the past, isn't it? Your fiancé should know these things. You're a woman! How can you not understand this? I'm damaged goods. If he found out about my past, he'd leave me. I finally found happiness with Jürgen. For once in my life. Please. Don't tell him. Please. Hmm. I doubt I'll ever understand human love. It has so many rules and conditions. What should we do, Elise? You decide. Me? Why do I have to? This woman's actions affected you far more than us. There's nothing I can do to make it up to you. But please, forgive me. I just don't care anymore. Elise is all alone now, no matter what you do. <laughs> try to find Jürgen. We need to talk to him about the Wyverns. What's wrong, kid? Isla said there was nothing she could do to make it up to Elise. But did she actually try? Is there really nothing she can do? Isla is the only one who can answer that question. Wagering at the Shandu Coliseum. Want to give it a shot? Leia really loves to gamble. Count me out. That's surprising. You seem like the type who would enjoy that sort of thing. Gambling's a big thing in my hometown. 
I've seen it go wrong time and time again. Oh, come on! We'd just be doing it for fun. The folks who lose their shirts all start out saying that. It's the first rule of betting. If you're just goofing around, don't gamble. If you want to gamble, don't goof around. So, in other words... Only gamble when you're willing to stake everything. Exactly. Little dramatic, don't you think? If you really want to play, I'm not going to stop you. Just some friendly advice. Alvin sure got serious all of a sudden. Maybe we should take his advice. Yeah, let's skip the gambling. Maybe I should pay a quick visit. A visit to where? Oh, did you overhear that? It's nothing. Just an acquaintance who lives here is all. Who's this? My mother. She's not doing too well. I don't have a father or any siblings, so I have Violet look after her when I'm not around. Well, hello. Uh, hi. It's nice to see you, Balin. Slipped out of your house to come play, did you? What a shame that Alfred isn't here to play with you now. Where did that boy go off to? What is she talking about? Leticia, Alfred's away at boarding school, remember? Oh, yes, that's right. That poor boy must be crying his eyes out. He's so shy, and he always gets so lonely. Don't worry. He sent a letter saying he's fine. Oh, yes, and that he'll come home for his next break. I promised we'd take a trip on the big boat when he does. I know. Alfred said he can't wait to go. <laughs> you know what he said in his letter? He said he hoped that I wasn't crying. Isn't that funny? He's such a kind, thoughtful boy. Being away from her hometown has been tough on her. And my dad dying didn't help. All she talked about was how she wanted to go back home to the house we all lived in. Maybe she's happier now that she's forgotten all about that life. Oh. You've been doing all this for your mother? Yep. All these dirty jobs, it was all for mommy. Touching tale, isn't it? Alvin, you don't have to be like this. Spare me your sympathy. It's all rotten in the end. It's enough to drive me crazy myself. <sighs> Excuse me. Got something to say? that I was an orphan too, right? If I hadn't gotten involved in that line of work, I never would have survived my childhood. In other words, don't say anything to Jürgen. Also, I don't want to look after Leticia anymore. And I want you to tell Exodus to leave me alone. <sighs> I'm afraid I can't do that. 
Only Exodus can make the medicine my mother needs. And you're the only doctor shady enough to prescribe it. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go straight. Sorry. But I think it's a fair price for keeping my mouth shut. How could you? All I want is to live happily with Jürgen. And you can. As long as he doesn't find out about your past. <laughs> All done. But she's crying. Yeah, she's a big old crybaby. We're just gonna leave her like that? If you're so worried, go console her. Comfort the poor, tragic princess. Mom, I'm home. Oh no, I dozed off again. I have to make a peach pie before Alfred gets back from boarding school. He'll be home any minute. That boy just loves it, you know. Every time I make it, he eats himself sick. Is that right? Of course, he's always been such a sensitive boy. It doesn't take much to upset his stomach. Honestly, it makes me worry for his future. Thinking about it gives me an upset stomach. Sounds like he takes after you. Oh, and he told me in his last letter that he started keeping kitty cats as pets. I believe he said their names were Jude and Mila. That poor boy. He must be so lonely. But cats are a big responsibility. Don't worry. I hear he's taking good care of them. Oh, good. It's hard not being able to see him. But what can you do? This was Alfred's decision, after all. As long as he's well, that's all that matters. I mean that, okay? Yes, I know. <sighs> Remember that beautiful woman I saw you speaking to in Shandu? Carla? What about her? How odd that you never bothered to introduce me. Uh... <clears throat> Do you want to meet her? What's this? There's someone you want me to meet. Oh my. Well, I suppose it would be rude to refuse. Are you okay? We should stop and rest. No, no, I'm fine. You shouldn't push yourself. No sign of Jürgen. I hope Elise is okay. Something has been troubling me about these booster devices. Do you remember the experiment Noctagall was conducting at Fort Gondola? 
Might that have been a test of the booster's capabilities? You're suggesting Roshigal already has booster technology as well. That would be a logical conclusion. That's not good. Even kids like Elise are strong if they have boosters. If both countries were to wage war with booster-equipped soldiers, it would be a catastrophe unlike any the world has ever seen. Would they really risk having such a destructive war? Noctical might. He seems convinced that he could actually win. Especially since he has the Lance of Kresnik. Oh, here you are. Isla told me you were back in town. I'm so relieved to find you safe. Thanks. Are the wyverns you promised us ready to ride yet? Yes, but there's a hitch. Now that we're on the brink of war, we can't fly the wyverns without royal permission. For that, I'll need to head to the capital, Canvalar. Hey, maybe we should warn the King of Ashul how ugly things will get if war breaks out. The King does seem pretty popular. Do you think maybe he'd fight alongside us? Whoa, hold on. This is a war we're talking about here, not a tavern brawl. I'd like a face-to-face -face chat with the King myself, but for a different reason. I want to ask him for the truth behind the laboratory. It's crucial that we meet the King of Ajul. We'll head for Kambalar right away. Uh, okay. I'll get my things together. What does Mila mean by the truth behind the laboratory? Apparently, Elise wasn't the only kid they kept at that place. Lots of other children were brought there too. Did Zhao tell you that? If the king truly wishes to protect his people, he'll give me the answer I see. If he gives me the wrong answer, I'll remind him of his duty. I'll make him swear to never resort to such methods again, by any means necessary. Good idea! Let's go pick the king's brain! Oh, I just remembered! All our luggage is back at the inn! Let us go fetch it. I'll catch up with you in a bit. Alvin. You did well back there. I knew I could trust you to protect Elise for us. Well, I was prepared to honor my promise. Keep the faith, O oh, hollowed spirit. Never a dull moment with that guy. Soon enough, I'll have to prepare myself too. Huh? I am strong enough to destroy the Lance of Kresnik as I am now, without the Four's power. Wait, you sure it's a good idea to destroy it with the Four Great Spirits still trapped inside? They would likely not survive. They would lose their forms and disintegrate. But I thought the Four Great Spirits couldn't die. Eventually, new Great Spirits will appear to take their place. But they will be a different Four, with different wills. So that means the Four Great Spirits that you know, the ones that were always with you, they would just disappear? A Spirit's personality and memories are unimportant. What matters is a Spirit's existence itself. <sighs> Still, I doubt the Four will forgive me for this. You really care about all spirits, don't you? Not just the Great Four, but the lesser spirits, too. Not just spirits. Humans as well. To me, all lives, human and spirit, are equal and precious. Let's head for Kanbalar. It seems that Exodus has slipped through our fingers. There's nothing we can do about that now. They must be as desperate as we are, given their behavior. 
And what do you intend to do about Alvin? If we send him away, he'll only follow us. And we can't neutralize him by force without risking our own lives. Therefore, the safest solution is to keep him where we can see him. Besides, for good or for ill, that man has the power to change the circumstances of any situation. That is not a power to be dismissed lightly. Nor is the wisdom of the Lord of Spirits. Do you ever think about Nia Kara? Ivor will protect it in my absence. There's no need to worry about the village's safety. Oh, I wasn't asking about that. What I meant is, do you ever get homesick? Oh. Sometimes I do miss the purity of Nia Kara air. Well, if you ever want to go back, just say the word. You don't look so good. Maybe we should take a few days off. No, we can't afford to do that. Ah, ooh, ow, such agony. I think I just threw out my back again. Uh, oh, oh no! My, uh, acute hiccup disorder. It's totally flaring up. That sounds pretty serious. You two need to get some rest. Please! <laughs> yes, please! Ow, ow, ow! Very well. I had hoped to get an early start tomorrow, but I guess we can push our departure back a bit. <sighs> Does your Asperixis still hurt? No. Not as much as before. Before? Before it was so bad that you passed out from the pain. Without the Asperixis, I wouldn't be able to stand, let alone walk and fight. To me, there is no greater pain than having something to do and being unable to do it. Thanks to this, I can do what I have to. The pain is a small price to pay. Hmm. <sighs> How's Mila doing? She's pushing herself too hard. Mila's so composed that it's easy to forget sometimes. But the fact is, she's making a difficult journey after suffering a terribly debilitating injury. And taking it easy doesn't seem to be in her vocabulary. If only there was some way to alleviate her pain, even just a little. If only we had a heart herb. Oh, of course. Heart herbs are renowned for their ability to relieve pain. Yeah, I learned about them in my pharmacology class. When used in aromatherapy, they're supposed to ease the tension in both body and mind. They're also rare, bordering on extinction. I wanted to get a heart herb for a special lady once, but I couldn't find one anywhere. I'm sure it won't be easy to find, but I want to try, for Mila's sake. Sorry, I wasn't able to speak with you earlier. I'm Carla Outway. It's lovely to meet you. I'm Mila. Rowan, a pleasure to meet you. Carla's a historian and a teacher. That's very admirable of you. Not at all. And how about you? You won the tournament, right? That makes Elise one of the youngest winners ever. Really? Remember what I told you about Master Hemming? He won his first tournament when he was 14. And until Elise showed up, his record was never officially broken. And what about unofficially? An astute question. Unofficially, the youngest person to win the tournament did so at 12, the same age as Elise. He was a young boy who fought his way to the final match alone without even using a Lilium Orb. Are you sure he wasn't a spirit? No, no, of course he wasn't. His name was Erston Outway. Erston Outway? Is he related to you? My brother. 
This happened 20 years ago. But why wasn't his victory officially recognized? Our father was the chief of the Outway tribe. But we were a small tribe, and the other tribes used their influence to change things the way they saw fit. That's just how it was back then. So you're saying his win was taken away? Yes, it was his opponent's doing. He belonged to a tribe that was very close to the king. Twenty years ago. That would place it before the dawn of Azure. Before the current king took the throne, the chiefs of several large tribes ruled alongside his predecessor. Many people were killed back then, but our current king put a stop to that. I see. Anyway, I have an important errand to run. See you all again soon. Imagine having a hard-fought victory erased like that. I wonder how Carla's brother felt. I used to be quite a martial artist myself. I defended my position as the army's second strongest fighter throughout my military career. If it were me who was robbed like that, I'd have hunted down my opponent and thrashed him again when no one was looking. R Rowan, you play pretty dirty. So what would you do in that situation? Me? I... I can't even imagine. If you leave an egg in an empty box, and said egg gets crushed, the cause must lie within the egg itself. How's egg principle? It sounds obvious, but at the same time, not so much. 500 years ago, Professor Howe used that principle to deduce how spirit channeling works. Although, people still channeled beforehand, right? They just didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. Since spirits have no apparent physical form, people weren't aware they existed at all. But Professor Howe surmised that something had to be converting the mana from our mana lobes into arts. And that turned out to be spirits. Yep. His hypothesis was proven with the discovery of spirits that had taken physical forms. And because he figured out what was inside the egg, the age of spirit arts was born. Exactly. Although there's still a lot we don't understand about spirits. Like Maxwell being a busty 20-year-old. Bet even Professor Howe didn't see that coming.
What? Hustles! This is where the old Booster Research Lab was located. There used to be several buildings here, but they've all been torn down. That was probably my fault. They abandoned this place after I infiltrated it. Is that all you did? Hey, this is me you're talking to. The client got way more than their money's worth. So you managed to smuggle out information about the boosters? Not just information. An actual prototype. Couldn't get my hands on one of those third-gen models, though. You mean Tipo? I'd say it was a dirty trick. Who'd have thought they'd hide their top-secret device in some children's toy? When I found its blueprints, I threw them away. It looked like someone scribbled gibberish. You can imagine my surprise when I first saw Elise and Tipo and Hamil. So you knew who they were all along? Come on, don't get upset. My booster job was long done by then. No conflict there. That's not the issue here. Apparently not. What is the issue here? <sighs> Let's change the subject. What exactly was your job at the time? Kinda feel like I'm being interrogated. we just like to know you better. <sighs> fine, fine. At the time, I was working as your escort. You're the one who hired me, remember? <sighs> Come on, don't look at me like that. Hey, I'm a professional here. I take the work, I do a good job, and I move on. How did that become a strike against me? You know, it is a mercenary's job to fight. Not that I mind getting paid to twiddle my thumbs. My stomach seems to be empty again. When do we eat? If you'll excuse me, I think nature is calling. Yeah. Thanks for the heads up. No need to keep us posted. Lady Mila, welcome home. Your timing is impeccable. Oh, wow. It really is Lord Maxwell. I knew it the second I laid eyes on her. Who are these people? They came here looking for you. They claim to be acquaintances of yours. Don't you remember us? We all played together when we were children. Oh, of course I remember. Are they the ones that gave you the glass bead? That's right. We heard rumors of a village that worshipped Maxwell, and we came to see ourselves. We really wanted to see you again. Now that I think about it, I do recognize your faces. It was so good of you to come. I'm pleased as well. Lady Mila doesn't get nearly as many worshippers as she deserves. You guys should catch up. We can entertain ourselves for a while. But... That would be great. Maybe we could chat about the old days, for old time's sake. Go for it. Very well, then. Come, let us talk at my shrine. I guess we'll just hang out at Ivor's house, then. Good idea. Hey, you can't just invite yourself over like that. Although, naturally, my house is always ready to receive visitors. Here, I'll prove it to you. Wow, you really do keep this place tidy. What would you charge to clean my room? <laughs> it's all part of a handmaid's duties. And now I'll show you how a handmaid makes tea. It'll be just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Thanks, but you really don't need to.
Oh, hi, Mila. Back so soon? Yes. We said all we had to say. Don't tell me they confessed their true feelings for you. <laughs> In fact, they did. Really? Wait, hold on. Don't worry. My path has not changed. Yeah, I trust you. All right. Back to it, then. All right, twerps. Soon you'll be feasting your lips on the greatest tea you've ever tasted. And you'd better appreciate it, because... Huh? Where'd they go? Ah, all that premium tea wasted. This is going on your list of crimes, phony! No, it is a mercenary's job to fight. I brought more proof! How you like them, Peaches? You're good. With this, you've proven yourself as an intermediate pinkist. But that cute pink thing can only be shown to pro-pinkists. It's the law. There's a law for that? <laughs> there super is! You can't let them beat you. Calm down, Jude. How can I become a pro pinkist? You have to bring us something every pinkist dreams of. A pink emerald. If you can do that, we'll accept you as one of us. <laughs> we'll super accept you. Okay, let's do this. Thank you. 